Arla Foods is trialing a new feed additive, Bovair, to tackle methane emissions from cow's digestion. The initiative involving 30 farms and partnerships with Morrison's, Aldi and Tesco aims to cut emissions by around 27%. However, concerns have been raised about the long-term effectiveness and potential impacts on animal health. Arla's press manager in Sweden, Max Wallenberg, says to Rix, As a consumer, you can feel completely safe with our products. Bovair is approved by the EU because it's completely harmless to animals and humans and is not transferred to milk. It is currently used in over 25 countries, including in Sweden, where several other dairy companies give Bovair to the cows. I understand that you can get worried when you see things flicker by quickly on social media, but the concern is based on inaccuracies and false claims. Of course, we would never do anything that could harm animals or people. End quote. Riggs Europe interviews Patrick Holden, a farming advisor to King Charles III and the founder of the Sustainable Food Trust. Holden is also a dairy farmer and cheesemaker with a herd of 90 cows in West Wales. I think the dairy cow has been treated as a scapegoat for the, uh, the global climate change emissions problem. I don't think it, it was ever the dairy cow's fault. It, uh, and I think that the climate change committees all over the world have identified cows as part of the problem in terms of climate change because of their methane emissions, when in fact, if they're grazed as they used to be grazed, you know, in wild herds and also still are grazed in holistic grazing systems, the cow is not part of the problem. The cow is part of the solution. And my concern is that we've industrialized dairy farming and the, the cow is now being re-engineered to suit industrial dairy farming when it wouldn't be necessary if we just farm in a way which is in harmony with nature. And so, although... You know, I don't know much about the particular ingredients of Bovair. I know that it, they're not bacterial, as I said in the link in article, they're chemical. Mm. But it just seems to me that if we're going to mess around with the rumen of the dairy cow, there are bound to be unintended consequences. And why would we want to do that in the first place if the cow can be carbon positive if she's grazed correctly? So um, how do you respond to those who blame social media for uh, misinformation regarding Bovair? And uh, do, you, do you think it's correct that consumers uh, choose to boycott and question this method? I think I'm not saying there are no um, people in the social media world who are stirring this debate. But I think the vast majority of the people who have responded I have genuine concerns about what we are doing to our food in general and to cows and dairy products in particular. And I think they are right to be concerned. We should welcome their concerns because unless we have the public asking tough questions about the way we farm, the farming community of which I am part are not going to be able to change their farming systems and make them less intensive. You may know, because I don't know how close you are to Arla, that a large and increasing majority of the milk that everyone drinks these days comes from cows that are fully housed or never get out to grass. Mm. And for, for those herds, I'm sure, and many of those farmers are represented in Arla, maybe even a majority in terms of their influence, uh, it's a very good news story if we can reduce their emissions. But I think that treating the symptom, not the cause of the problem, which is the intensification of dairy farming. What do you think uh, government, how should government policies evolve to better support, uh, support sustainable farming practices? Well, if, if we can show that graze, uh, grazing systems, holistic and regenerative grazing systems, can be carbon negative, in other words, can sequester carbon on an ongoing basis, then governments and food companies, including Arla, should give a premium to grazing herds. Mm. And that way we would provide a financial incentive that for dairy herds that are part of the solution in climate, in climate terms. Because all the, the Bovair or how you pronounce it is going to do is it's just going to reduce the emissions, mm. uh, the emissions from the 
pounds, and it may be that there are unintended consequences. I would be willing to bet that there will be. I don't know what they are. I'm not a chemist. But if you put nitrate and whatever the other thing is, it's the rumour of a cow, and you think there are no consequences apart from the reduction of, in methane emissions by a third, I would say probably you're, you're, you're hoping for the best, but I doubt if that will be true. So do you think that this is a sustainable solution in the long run? No, I, I think the sustainable solution in the long run is to, um, is to put the cows back up to grass again. Mm. And... Um, so I think, it, as I said, it's treating the symptoms, not the cause of the problem. Um, I, I look, I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an anti-dairy farmer. I'm a dairy farmer myself. Yes. And I don't blame, I don't blame the dairy farmers who have intensified. They're only responding to price signals. You know, the truth is, you've got to get intensive and get big or get out if you're a dairy farmer these days, unless you have advantages. And I have advantages. I have a day job. I also make cheese from our milk. But for normal dairy farmers, it's almost impossible now in the UK to make a living if you have less than 100 dairy cows. And even if you have 100, it's only just possible. Mm. And that's wrong. Yeah. Because farmers deliver what economists call positive externalities. So that means they, they contribute towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions through grazing, uh, through increasing biodiversity, and also social consequences, improve nutrient um, quality and um, educating children. I was a Londoner who got educated when I went into a dairy shed in the in 1957, and it changed my life. Mm. So you know, I mean, and also as we employ people. We employ five people in our cheese dairy with a local cheese making operation. Now those what those are climate, nature, and social benefits, but we're not paid for them. Now if Small family farms were paid for their climate, nature, and social benefits. Then that would send economic signals that small, small-scale dairy farming is better for the planet, better for nature, better for public health. We don't have that situation. We have the opposite. The bigger you are, the more industrial you are, the more profit you will make. That's bad for society. I know there are dairy farmers in the Arla supply chain who agree with this. Yes. I know there are. Mm. I also know there are people who work for Arla who probably agree with this, but they cannot say so. Mm. I'm not anti Arla. No, no. You know, I, I, I have been to Denmark uh, with Han, who is uh, a senior sustainability person in Arla, and she's a very good woman. So I, I'm not saying Arla are a bad company. I'm not saying that at all. I'm simply saying we need to rethink this. Mm. Uh, and because uh, the UK is no longer within the the EU, but you still have to use Beauvais, which is generally, I understand, an EU uh, uh, EU invention. Well, we don't have to use it. I mean, I I I, I wish we were still in the European Union. I vote, you know, I vote in Remain, but that's another point. The point is, Arla have chosen, and the dairy farmers in the UK have chosen to. Some have chosen to use Beauvais, hmm. but I think it likely to have a negative consumer reaction and i think that that is not it may be that there are some climate deniers in the social media world who are i don't know if you have this phrase in swedish smoking fire but i don't think that's the primary reason why people are concerned mm. i think it's because more and more people are worried about the story behind their food that they eat and they don't want an industrial story where the cows are engineered to be climate friendly it'd be better if they did it 